conditions in the beyond. Once you have walked through the gate of death you will no longer feel your earthly shell but will be able to move about easily and freely, you will not be prevented from going wherever you want, you will not be forced in any way. And yet, this state can be painful for you too, namely, when you find yourselves in darkness, when there is no light and you are unable to see anything. This spiritual blindness is coupled with complete helplessness and a weakness of will which is unable to shake off its lethargy. Hence you will not be influenced by anything externally perceptible, but there can still be a limitation within yourselves which will prevent you from living, that is to say, from actively working in accordance with God's will, which all light receptive souls may do when they leave earth and who will therefore be placed into a kingdom where they may behold ever increasing beauty. To dwell in this magnificent kingdom is immensely blissful for the souls of the dead, for they will leave all worldliness, difficulty, misery and imperfection behind and will be united by love with spiritual beings who are full of love, wisdom and strength. And the soul will take part in this now ever new discoveries will enchant its spiritual senses, it will behold creations of exceptionally marvelous shapes which cannot be compared to earthly creations. Furthermore, it will no longer be subject to time and space, it will be able to stay wherever it wants and can move into the past as well as into the future. Once the soul has reached perfection, that is, once it has entered the kingdom of light, it is no longer bound to the law of space and time. Yet even there the degrees of light differ, which stimulate ever greater aspiration and also unite the beings to shape and work with combined strength. The activity in love is a supreme law in this kingdom as well, for this reason the beings of light help each other in perfect harmony, giving happiness and receiving it in turn. Their constant effort, however, concerns the souls in darkness, whom they know to suffer utmost hardship and whom they want to help through teaching. There is no impulse of life in areas of spiritual darkness, the beings are totally apathetic if they are not burning with rage, thirsting for revenge and engaging in constant fighting with one another. The latter need an endless time until they calm down and fall into a lethargic state but only then can they be helped by the beings of light. In contrast to these, the imperfect beings are mainly full of selfishness and therefore unapproachable for teachings concerning the commandment of love. However, having ample patience the beings of light never tire of helping them, so that it almost always will result in spiritual progress after the beings have discarded their vicious instincts and no longer attempt to tear each other apart. The state of lethargy is at all times the preliminary state of awakening from sleep, and it only requires some loving support so that these beings, too, will catch a gleam of light and begin to see. Yet it will often take a long time, because free will takes precedence in the spiritual kingdom too, which may not be forced if the being is to achieve beatitude. Amen.